Holy coming attractions! It's Trailers from Hell, and I'm Josh Olson, and we're going to be going to camp with the 1966 feature film Batman. Quick! Everyone! Flee for your lives! Ah, uh, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Riddle me this, Batman. What do you get when you mix a smash hit TV show with a studio desperate to squeeze every last dime? Why, a movie, of course. This film was in response to the phenomenal popularity of the TV show. Uh, the film was rushed into production to take advantage of the show's heat and opened during the summer uh, between the first and second seasons. The Batman TV show ran from 1966 to 1968. It was a half-hour show that came on twice a week, and for a brief period, Batmania swept the nation. I came to the show in reruns as a kid and absolutely loved it, took it very seriously. And then as an adult, I was thrilled to discover that if you're over the age of about 15, it's actually a comedy and a really, really good one. And I fell in love with it all over again. It was created by Lorenzo Semple Jr. and William Dozier. Semple also wrote some very serious films, Three Days of the Condor and the Parallax View among them. He also wrote the Sean Connery, James Bond uh, feature or co-wrote it, Never Say Never Again. Dozier also produced the Green Hornet TV show, which was responsible for introducing Bruce Lee to America. There's a great crossover episode where the Green Hornet meets Batman that featured a showdown between Burt Ward's Robin and Bruce Lee's Kato. They fight to a standstill, and even as a kid I knew that was complete bullshit. Burt Ward could have kicked Kato's ass any day of the week. The movie didn't do real well. It wasn't promoted much. Plus, the year before, the hit TV show Man From U.N.C.L.E. had spawned a feature film that was actually just two episodes of the show cut together with one or two scenes thrown into it. And I think people were probably a little bit burned by that. So they kind of stayed away from the Batman movie, but the next season it went back on the air and it was a huge hit all over again. Uh, there have been many iterations of Batman over the years, and each of them is somebody's favorite. As much as I've enjoyed the recent Christopher Nolan films, I have to say that this particular one here is mine. And I can't even begin to defend that in any kind of serious intellectual way. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. But it makes me feel like a kid again. Nobody would ever look to Adam West's Batman for a thoughtful examination of terrorism in the post-9-11 world. Uh, the one thing that there can be no argument about is of all the various configurations Batman has taken over the years, this one far and away has the most badass theme song. It's been covered over the decades by uh, everyone from Dwayne Eddy to the British group The Jam to Iggy Pop. And let's face it, you know it and I know it, it's absolutely the greatest theme song in the history of television. And that's just a sample of the exciting exploits ahead in our first feature motion picture. I love in this part here how uh, Batman emphasizes that it's their first full-length motion picture feature, implying, of course, that there will be more. But sadly, there were not. Soon, very soon, Batman and I will be better pulking right out of your TV sets and onto your theater screens. 